So how is climate change affecting Antarctica? Hello friends, Jim here. Article appeared in phys.org. Climate change is speeding up in Antarctica. So in this uh, figure here, here's a bit of the Antarctic Peninsula. The black box is what enlarges to this here. And they took uh, measurements over six days, and points included. And the different colors respond to the days that the measurements were made. And, um, and you, you can see, for example, Esperanza had the highest temperature on, uh, recorded on the 6th of February at 18.3 C. Marambio or Marambio, uh, also on the same day of 15.8 C. And for example, the, the Larsen Ice Shelf on the 8th of February, 5.3 C. And you know, you can see all the, the various uh, temperatures that were recorded. And these are record breaking temperatures during the heat wave of 6 February 2020. And we know conditions have warmed up, more, uh, more ice loss or less ice, sea ice forming, and so forth. Recent years, Antarctica has experienced a series of unprecedented heat waves. On 6 February 2020, temperatures 18.3 were recorded, the highest ever seen on the continent, which was better than the prior record of 17.5, which was just a few years earlier. February 2022, two years later, another strong heat wave led to record-breaking surface ice melt. In March 2022, East Antarctica saw its strongest ever heat wave with temperatures going up to 30 or 40 degrees C higher than the average in some areas. Holy crap. Over the last year, we have seen the lowest levels of Antarctic sea ice coverage, or extent, since uh, data has been uh, collected and gathered. Events in recent years have bordered on the unbelievable, and it's difficult not to link them to climate change. In fact, studies have already emerged that clearly attribute some of these heat waves to global warming. One of our investigations strongly suggests that without the influence of climate change, 2020's record-breaking temperatures would not have occurred. In 2009, a study quantified the speed of ecosystem migration due to climate change on a global scale and documented essentially the speed at which certain species have to move to ensure their survival. Now, I have discussed before how organisms are, you know, have to either move north and or move up in uh, elevation to stay within preferred temperature ranges. This is a big problem for uh, aquatic organisms, especially oceanic organisms, where they either have to dive deeper or move to higher latitudes to stay within preferred temperature ranges. But then the issue for them becomes, will they uh, encounter enough food that they need for their metabolic needs? It concluded that biomes were moving at a speed between 0.8 kilometers and 12.6 kilometers per decade, with an average speed of 4.2 kilometers per decade. So they applied that uh, approach and, uh, and they applied it to the edges of Antarctica. And uh, let's see if this little video will play. And what it is showing is the evolution of the annual and seasonal position of the zero degree isotherm in Antarctica between 1957 and 2020. The initials indicate the seasons for each measurement. So, uh, for example, 
uh, M-A-M is March, April, May, right? Then you have J-J-A is June, July, August. So March, uh, April, May is autumn. June, July, uh, August is winter. And then September, October, November is spring. December, January, February is uh, summer. Okay? Remember, it's the Southern Hemisphere. So let's see if we can, uh, if this will play. Okay, it's not going to play. And as you can see, this is 2006. So this is the annual average. And this shows the, the black this shows the black circle around the continent. And this is showing the annual. And again, uh, March, April, May is their autumn. You can see the indicated in yellow. June, July, August, uh, the winter. It makes sense that, you know, as it gets th the colder, would extend, uh, you know, f northwards towards the equator. And then we see it starting to retreat back during the springtime. And then here's the summertime. And you can see that the summertime and the, is, is kind of close to the autumn, but definitely further in by a bit. But you can see how, and this is just the 2006, it's gotten, uh, as I'll show in a few moments, the zero isotherm has gotten closer to the peninsula over time and averaged over the year. So you can see that right here. And that's the basic basis of their um, study here. The zero degree isotherm, let's, let's uh, define what that is. It's, it's an imaginary line that encloses the areas that are at zero degrees or colder. Its southward movement means that the area with temperatures below zero Celsius in Antarctica is getting smaller and smaller. Given that fresh water freezes at zero degrees, the movement will have serious consequences for ecosystems and the cryosphere. Cryosphere is all that frozen bit, right? Where, you know, like the permafrost, frozen water, ice, that sort of stuff. Our calculations have shown or show that the zero degree isotherm has moved at a speed of 15.8 kilometers per decade since 1957 in the area surrounding Antarctica. While on the Antarctic Peninsula itself, it has moved at a, I would say, a whopping 23.9, nearly 24 kilometers per decade. That's about 15 miles, folks. As a result, it now sits more than 100 kilometers south of where it was in the mid 20th century. Look at that again. It sits more than 100 kilometers south where it was in the mid 20th century, basically over, say over 70 years. These measurements show that the speed of climate change on the edge of Antarctica is four times faster than the average of other ecosystems. Let me remind you, okay? Average speed of 4.2. Hey, you multiply that by four, you get what, 16.8 uh, or so? And you're finding 15.8? Right, pretty close, right? And then the peninsula itself, well, that looks like about you know six times, almost. Pretty, uh, pretty significant. So they they ran some modeling on this, and their modelings uh, project that the isotherm's movement will accelerate, regardless of emissions. So the extent of its southward movement in the second half of the 21st century will depend on how much carbon is emitted. If the, we continue on with our current rate of emissions, the zero degree isotherm will continue to advance at a similar rate before slowing down during the second half of the 21st century. However, if emissions are higher, 
which is very likely if we continue burning fossil fuels and with ever more people demanding energy, the isotherms migration will accelerate continuing southward move until the end of the century. And this diagram shows the change in the summertime position of the zero degree isotherm over the 21st century. And it's based on the IPCC climate scenario, the, the 8.5, which is the most realistic of their IPCC modeling. So from the blue line here, we can see this is, you know, the summertime position of the zero isotherms. In other words, from this line towards the continent, towards the pole, it will be zero or colder. And that was in 1957 to 2014. They're projecting that by tw from 2040 to 2069, it will move even further south. So now from here towards the South Pole, it will be zero or colder during the summertime. So in other words, all this is warmed up. And if you continue further, especially if emissions are higher, even more latitude will be warmer. So now we shrink even more so that area, that region, that it's zero or colder. Here's an important bit. The zero degree isotherm southward movement will not remain solely in the atmosphere. It will also affect the cryosphere, all the frozen areas, and the biosphere. Changes in the isotherm's position will mean more liquid rain instead of snow in the outermost regions of the continent but it could result in increased snowfall elsewhere. Reduced snowfall on the frozen sea, which acts as an insulation, may lead to accelerated loss of sea ice during summer thaw periods. Well, if we're seeing the zero isotherm migrating, and what have we seen recently? We're seeing even in their winter time, we're seeing the sea ice extent decreasing because you have what? This is ocean. Ocean heat is prevent, you know, so you're warming up things. Now, granted, they're talking about air temperatures here, but what goes on in the ocean is going to affect the air temperature. So the oceans are warming up things. Well, you're going to lose the ice, just like we see in the Arctic. Although the effects on permafrost, ice shelves, and continental ice are still uncertain, it will undoubtedly affect the peripheral glaciers of the Antarctic Peninsula. These constitute one of the largest potential sources of sea level rise in the coming decades. Changes in the cryosphere will also lead to changes in ecosystem. New areas will become habitable thanks to thawing ice, but with more areas above zero degrees, invasive species from warmer, more hospitable continents may be able to settle and compete with native species for resources. So I think we can all hypothesize what the effects will be on the permafrost ice shelves and continental ice. They'll be thawing and melting. So, this is what we're seeing. You know, we've documented how the Arctic is warming four times faster, some places five times faster than the rest of the planet. Well, now we're seeing what? A migration of the zero isotherm further south, uh, ex accelerating four to six times faster than the global average. So, the changes in the polar regions, top and bottom, right? Arctic, Antarctic is much faster, much higher than the rest of the planet. And that has serious, severe consequences for the planet, for ecosystems, and for us. Until next time.